On the 8th of May 2019, 35-year-old Amanda Ella became lost while hiking at the Marker Well Forest Reserve, which is located in Maui County in Hawaii. After two weeks and three days, a rescue helicopter found Ella walking barefoot between two waterfalls and waving her arms. Javier Cantalops, one of the rescuers in the helicopter, described the encounter as unbelievable. Ella wandered deep into the forest after she fractured her leg while hiking. She was reported missing the following day, and search parties were sent after her. As time went on, family and friends began to suspect foul play, and offered a $50,000 reward for her discovery. On the 25th of May, rescuers found her with minor injuries, 15 pounds lighter, and otherwise in a stable condition. Her rescuer attributed Ella's ability to survive to her experience with nature. Candelop said her career as a physical therapist, as well as a knowledge of yoga techniques and of the local vegetation, are what saved her life. Ella's parents were relieved and extremely grateful to be reunited with their daughter. Almost three months after her parents were shot and killed in their Wisconsin home, on 15th of October 2018, investigators found her missing daughter, 13-year-old Jamie Kloss, more than 60 miles away from where she disappeared the night of her murder. Jamie approached the woman who was walking her dog around 5 p.m. on 10th January 2019 in Gordon, Wisconsin. The woman recognized her immediately and took her to a nearby neighbor's house and called 911. The police quickly arrived at the scene and took 21-year-old Jake Patterson into custody. He confessed to scoping out Kloss's home after they randomly saw her boarding a bus. He spent two weeks planning her kidnapping and even shaved his head to prevent any DNA evidence linked to the crime scene. Jamie was later admitted to the local hospital for medical treatment. Her aunt Sue Allard explained to the media that she expected any news about her niece to be the worst. I just cannot believe this. The kidnapper's mother, according to a neighbor, was totally distraught over her son's supposed actions. Jake pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree intentional homicide and one count of kidnapping. On 24th May 2019, Patterson was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences in prison without a possibility of parole. As he left one of the courtroom hearings, he reportedly commented to no one in particular, Bye Jamie. Jan Broberg was just 12 years old when family friend and neighbour Robert B. Berktold took Jan from her home, claiming he was taking a horseback riding. In reality, he dosed her and took her to Mexico, where he then married her. Initially, her parents were so swayed by him that they truly believed he took her on a horseback riding trip. It wasn't until the FBI stepped in and officially declared it a kidnapping case that a nationwide search started. As the FBI investigated, they discovered that Berktold had intimate relationships with Jan's parents just to get close to her. During their first abduction in 1974, Berktold told Jan that she had been taken by a UFO and she was part alien. He said she needed to complete a mission, conceive a child with a human male. Berktold said he was to be the father. He continued to molest her while living in his murder home in Mexico before authorities stepped in and arrested him. For two years, she believed her family's lives were in danger because she was failing to fulfill the alien's demands. Even though her parents signed affidavits to effectively stop the nationwide search and persecution of Berktold, the FBI continued their investigation and the kidnapper entered a plea deal. He went to prison for 45 days. In 1976, he took her again, this time making it look like she ran away from home. Berktold pretended to be a father and enrolled in an all-girls Catholic school. He kept in touch with Jan's parents, claiming that he had no idea where she was. The FBI eventually took notice and bugged the Broberg's phones so they could record the conversations. She was missing for a hundred days before police tracked her down and found her enrolled in a Catholic girls' school in California. Jan says that while she was with Berktold, he violated her more than 200 times. On the 5th of July 2018, Angela Hernandez suddenly went missing while she was traveling from Oregon to California to visit her family. She sent her family a text saying she was pulling over in a grocery store parking lot to sleep in her car. After texting the following morning that she was getting back on the road, her communication suddenly stopped. Her family could not reach her on the phone, which prompted them to contact the authorities on the 6th of July. 
while heavy fog initially hampered search efforts, a married couple hiking in Big Sur contacted the police after noticing the partially submerged washed up wreck of her jeep at the bottom of a cliff, missing its roof from the impact. She was amazingly found alive in a rocky spot on the mountains after being missing for seven days. She said she saw a small animal ran on the highway and swerved to miss it. She veered off the edge of a cliff and crashed about 200 feet below. She managed to use a radiator hose from a car to catch water dripping from the moss on the rocks. She was starved, bruised and battered. She suffered a brain hemorrhage, fractured four ribs including her collarbone, a collapsed lung and ruptured blood vessels in both eyes, among other injuries. Natasha Ryan was dropped off at her school in Rockhampton, Queensland on the final winter morning of the 31st of August 1998. She never made it to the classroom roll call, prompting an exhaustive and unsuccessful police and state emergency services search. Her parents explained to the police that she often ran away from home, but felt that this time it was different. During the investigation, Natasha's 21-year-old boyfriend told authorities he had no idea where his 14-year-old girlfriend was either. During the time of Natasha's disappearance, three other local women had also gone missing from the Rockhampton area, painting a macabre picture. All indications suggested that she'd been murdered that morning. Authorities had no leads on where Natasha's body was, but they did have a confession. It was from a man who spent 20 of the preceding 22 years in prison for sexually assaulting women, Leonard, the Rockhampton rapist Fraser. He admitted to Natasha's murder as part of a plea bargaining that would exempt him from mingling with the general prison population. It was the 11th of April 2003, almost five years after Natasha's disappearance, when things got a little hairy. Fraser was on trial at the time, when police prosecutor Paul Rutledge stood to announce that Fraser was not guilty of the murder of Natasha Ryan, because Natasha was found alive. Detectives found her the night before, healthy and well, hiding in the cupboard at her boyfriend Scott Black's house. He had of course insisted to the police, on numerous occasions, that he had not seen or heard from Natasha. This couldn't have been further from the truth, as he had been hiding her all along. The teenager had been living quietly with Scott, first at Yapoon and then back at Rockhampton, just four kilometres away from the mother. She told investigators that when visitors were over, she would hide in cupboards, but otherwise she would wander around the house like normal, albeit with the curtains closed. When she left the house, it would be under the cover of complete darkness. Natasha was fined $1,000 for causing a false investigation. Scott was convicted of perjury and handed a three-year jail sentence, of which he served 12 months. He was also forced to pay $16,000 towards the cost of the investigation. Lucy Ann Johnson was born on October 14, 1935 in Alaska. Her parents eventually moved to Yukon in Canada, where she lived from 1943 to 1952. Lucy met Marvin Johnson, who became her husband in 1954. They moved to Surrey, British Columbia. On the morning of May 14, 1965, Marvin Johnson went to the police and told them that his wife Lucy is missing. The police were shocked to learn that Lucy had actually been missing for four years. Since Marvin did not report his wife missing for four years, the police immediately became suspicious. There was absolutely no evidence however, and the case went cold. The Surrey Police Department renewed their efforts in trying to find Lucy in 2013. This also motivated Lucy's daughter, Linda, to help find her mom. Linda now had children and grandchildren of her own. She ran newspaper ads in areas she knew her mother frequented. One of those areas was Yukon, where she lived when she was younger. A woman responded to the newspaper ad and told Linda that she believes they are half-sisters. She told Linda that her mother Lucy was still alive. Linda travelled to Yukon to see her mother. Lucy, now 77 years old, claimed that Marvin was very abusive towards her and had been cheating on her with other women. She tried leaving with the children, but Marvin stopped her and she was forced to leave on her own. Linda is unsure how to feel about all of this, as she still feels abandoned. <laughs> 